Wolfularen was one of the most loyal and respected officers in the Republic Navy, serving side by side with the most renowned generals including Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi. So why did he betray the Jedi and then join the Imperial Security Bureau after the fall of the Republic? Well, the answer is much more complicated than you might think. So hit that subscribe button and let's break down the reasons why Wolfularen betrayed the Jedi and joined the Empire. So to get a picture of who Yularen was as a man and as a military officer, we have to go back to his days as a young man and how he grew to become incredibly close with Chancellor Palpatine. Yularen grew up as a very wealthy and well-connected young boy on the planet Coruscant, born to a prolific Navy instructor who lived and breathed military tradition. His son, Wolf Yularen, continued this passion, eventually attending the Naval Academy on the planet Pressfelt IV, leaving him with two main options for his career. Since the Republic was demilitarized at this time before the Phantom Menace, he could join either the Republic Judicial Forces, which were sort of like galactic peacekeepers and inspectors when the Jedi couldn't show up, or he could join a planetary defense force. Being the huge military man that he was, Yularen chose to join a planetary defense force, seeing it as having a far greater military tradition than the toned down and frankly pretty weak judicial forces. He saw the judicial forces as pretty much being a fake military that didn't really get much done. As a result, he joined the prestigious Quimar Sector forces in the Outer Rim, taking the position of captain. Yularen absolutely loved the sense of pride and military tradition that he was experiencing in this role, fighting everything from slavers to pirates and black market smugglers. His time with the Quimar fleet left him utterly obsessed with uncovering corruption and ensuring that security and leaks were stopped at all costs. If you're familiar with where Wolf Yularen ended up in Rebels, you'll know that his hatred of leakers stuck with him all the way through. This love of hunting corruption eventually led him to a role in the Senate Bureau of Investigations, investigating and uncovering corruption among senators. As you can imagine, this left him hated among most senators, but Palpatine took a liking to him. Supreme Chancellor Palpatine quickly appointed him to an anti-corruption unit under his office, and as a result of this, the two came to admire each other greatly. They both formed similar views on how the galaxy should be ordered, and soon Yularen found himself in Palpatine's inner circle. Overall, the two simply couldn't agree more on how the galaxy should operate. It was also during this time that Yularen first encountered the renowned Separatist Admiral Trench at the Battle of Malastare Narrows, believing that he had died there, proven very scarily wrong. Something about this morning's engagement struck me as familiar. So I did a bit of research. And? I believe the opposing commander is none other than Admiral Trench. If I remember my military history, wasn't he vaporized at the Battle of Malastare and Arrows? That's what I thought too. This position for Yularen wouldn't last long, however, as shortly before the Clone Wars kicked off, the Senate defunded Palpatine's anti-corruption unit, believing that he was overreaching the powers of his office, leaving Wolf Yularen bitter, angry, and into an early retirement. At this point, Yularen was frustrated and lived his life on the remote world of Anaxis, wondering what to do with his life now that his only purpose had been taken away. Luckily for him, the Clone Wars kicked off not that long after, and Palpatine immediately offered him a role within the new Grand Army of the Republic Naval Forces, giving him the rank of Admiral. This made him the youngest Admiral to ever serve in the forces, once again strengthening the flourishing relationship between Wolf Yularen and Palpatine. Loyalty that Yularen would be sure to pay back. This leads us on to number two. Wolf Yularen really believed in the cause of the Republic, and the Empire was only the natural continuation of this cause. This, funnily enough, even extended to the Jedi General he was assigned to serve with, Anakin Skywalker. If you remember from the scene in Attack of the Clones, That's exactly what we do. The, the trouble is that people don't always agree. Well, then they should be made to. The Revenge of the Sith. And you're sounding like a Separatist. And from the Citadel with Tarkin. I wish more Jedi had your military sensibilities. Perhaps I can inform the Chancellor of your valor. It's clear that Anakin shares a pretty similar view of how the galaxy should run with Yularen, contributing to them getting along famously during the war. This reinforcement continued all the way throughout the war, solidifying Yularen's belief that the Separatists were not simply people who wanted to be treated fairly within the Republic, but instead extremists who wanted to throw the galaxy into chaos. And this view was actually very widespread by the end of the war. Most citizens of the galaxy actually welcomed the formation of the Empire because it put an end to the endless bloodshed and warfare of the Clone Wars, who most blamed the Separatists for. This was a big part of why the Empire punished former Separatist worlds so much more harshly than the rest. 
That then leads us to number three. Yularen 100% believed Palpatine's story that the Jedi had attempted to perform a coup and take power over the galaxy. Because of his extremely good relationship with Palpatine, his love of the Republic, and his strict view on anti-corruption, Yularen fully believed that the Jedi were traitors to the Republic and completely flipped from being peacekeepers to attempting to take power from Palpatine. When Palpatine marked the Jedi as traitors, Yularen had no reason not to believe him. The two shared the same vision for the galaxy, the same hatred for corruption, or at least, that's what Yularen believed with Palpatine, and Yularen barely even knew what the Jedi did before the war began. Being so disgusted with the Jedi's attempted coup, Yularen vowed to never let anything like that ever slip past him again, resigning his post in the Navy and immediately moving to the Imperial Security Bureau. Here he would be able to fulfill his desire to root out corruption in the brand new Empire and ensure that nobody could plot to take down Palpatine again like the Jedi had just done. One of Yularen's first major assignments in his new role at the ISB was to investigate every single senator who signed the Petition of 2000, which was a document signed by 2000 senators demanding that Palpatine give up his emergency powers. This was seen in a deleted scene of Revenge of the Sith, and many prominent senators like Padme Amidala and Bail Organa signed the petition before the Empire was formed. Yularen was tasked with investigating and intimidating everyone who signed it. In fact, many were executed as a result of these investigations. In a way, he probably saw this as payback for all of those years ago when the Senate dismantled his anti-corruption team, who was investigating them. Either way, Yularen quickly rose to the rank of colonel within the ISB and was in charge of the Empire's most important and critical intelligence operations. As part of this, he even served alongside infamous figures such as Grand Admiral Thrawn, Agent Callus, and Grand Moff Tarkin. And this leads us to the final reason, Wolf Yularen didn't really view his actions as a betrayal of the Jedi at all. In fact, it was likely the other way around. As said earlier, the Empire was simply the continuation of the Republic, so him remaining a key figure in the Galactic Government is no surprise, and he certainly didn't see it as him betraying his former allies in the Jedi Order. By this point, he likely viewed the Jedi as disgusting traitors who tried to overthrow Palpatine and take control for themselves. He knew nothing of their mystical ways and only ever saw them as monks who probably shouldn't be involved in the tactical planning of a galactic scale war. Although he did deeply respect his own Jedi General Anakin Skywalker for his courage in battle and his willingness to lead from the front. They also agreed on pretty much everything about the state of the galaxy and how it should be run, which leaves us with one major question. Did Wolf Yularen know that Anakin Skywalker was actually under the Darth Vader suit in the meeting room in A New Hope, where they were both present? We know in the current canon that Tarkin certainly did, but did Yularen also know? Well, in canon, we only have confirmation that Tarkin knew, and the matter of Yularen knowing has not yet been touched. But considering his propensity and interest in intelligence, as a member of the ISB, I'd say it's pretty likely he put the pieces together. Having served alongside Anakin for so long, he would have seen some of the same battlefield tactics in Darth Vader. And this is actually one of the reasons that made Tarkin realize that Vader was Anakin, because he saw him using so many of the same battlefield tactics as the former Jedi General. And with all of that said, we finally get to the most tragic point in the story. Colonel Wolf Yularen was sadly on board the first Death Star when Luke Skywalker blew the battle station up, killing everyone on board. As you'll know if you've read the Lost Stars book, many Imperials who were not aboard the Death Star when it was destroyed viewed this event as the worst attack in their history and on par with the destruction of Alderaan. This emboldened many Imperials, just as the destruction of Alderaan did for the Rebels. Ultimately, we don't know what Wolf Yularen was doing in his final moments, but he certainly lived a fulfilling and respectable life, showing that not all Imperials are pure evil. Some truly believe in the cause. So that is why Wolf Yularen betrayed the Jedi and joined the Empire. Thanks so much for watching guys, really hope you enjoyed the video, if you did leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.